The book of 3 John, verse 1. The book of 3 John, verse 1. Please use the NKJV translation. The elder, to the beloved Gaius, whom I love in truth, verse 2, beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and in health just as your soul prosper it. The message I'm going to be preaching today is called Just As Your Soul Prosper It. I think God will, I don't think, I, I know, God will want us to remind us that he delights in blessing his children. You know, we go through life and somehow we believe a lie that makes us feel like God is still thinking about whether to bless you or not. God took me through an understanding. He said, Olumide, this is how it works. You can be blessed from different areas, but there's something about my blessing. The Bible says, it make it rich and add it no. What it's trying to say to you is, do not be fixated on just being blessed. Look for the blessing that adds no sorrow. So he said, Olumide, you wanted to go into the university. And you tried your hands on some universities that you liked. I tried my hands on the Unilag of this world. I even tried my hands on Lasso that I didn't like just so that I could stay in Lagos. And it didn't work out. The same way some of us tried the wealth system of the world. The key sinners, the trample to conquer, the gossip to elevate, the know the boss, the tell them about your co-worker that is sleeping so that they kind of elevate you. You know those things, the cheat doing an exam, the pally up with that guy so that he can remember you when promotion is gone. They do those things. But those things come, even when you get the blessing, it comes with a bit of sorrow. Because guess what? You have to keep up that nature. Tell your neighbor, apply pressure. You have to apply pressure. You need to keep doing those things. The uncle that you slept with to get grade one, he's going to invite his friend so that you can get grade three. You need to apply pressure. The one that you lied to about your CV, when you get to higher places, you have to keep up that lie. Yeah. So you see, the world system starts to tell you that the end justifies the means. And some musicians will sing it. Then, for those that did not hear, that don't understand Yoruba very well, they told you, but you didn't hear it. They said, wire, wire. But you were too busy, you were dancing. Because Waya Waya is Yahoo Yahoo. But you didn't know. They were telling you, just get money, whichever way. But you didn't know. And you take that narrative, and that becomes a founding block for your life. That I just need to get rich. There's some of you that are maybe probably in the abroad. You listen to that other artist that says, get rich or die. Oh, wow. Come on now. But you see, this world system. It's very exhausting. Oof. In fact, the name of the game is not wealth, it's hustle. Because a hustler always has to be on the streets. A hustler is not only looking to gain, he's also guarding to protect. Oh, have you not seen gang, gang violence? Not only are you trying to take over a territory, you're also trying to defend your own. It's very exhausting. 
And you know the worst part of it? It has no certainty. Because for every time you are the top dog, you can turn it down a little bit. Some other person's life plan is to topple you. So you keep adding to your sleepless nights. You keep adding to the many things, the many lines of defense, the many scrupulous ways. For some that go into, into jazz, you have to toughen the jazz. You need to do all sorts just to attain or sustain that prosperity. So God starts this scripture by talking to his beloved and says, get this thing first. My desire is that you prosper. But I want you to prosper in all things and in health, but I am not going to jeopardize your soul. And I think we need to start to ask ourselves these questions. That what type of wealth am I attracting or am I chasing to the detriment of my so, I'm going to share with you five levels of prosperity because another thing is we think prosperity is only about money I understand the Bible says money is a defense the Bible says money answer it all things well you see the thing money does not answer it does not answer the things after life and that is really where your soul is going. Your soul is not for this earth. It's for the afterlife. It's the one that cannot be quantified in seconds, minutes, hours. It's the one that the only way they were able to express it was eternity. That's the only measurement they could give it. Titi Lai Lai, infinity. So everything you do must bring you to the point where when infinity happens, you are not suffering. Because if you are suffering there, I'm not sure there is a remedy. There are many times that we've seen rich people get rich, but they still have some vacuum. Some of you were privileged to be born in very rich homes. You didn't particularly pray for so many things. It came at a platter or you were decently comfortable. But it never took the space of something that you were looking for. I've heard cases. A rich boy leaves everything he has and he says, I want to find myself. Meaning that wealth cannot find you. So for some of you that think, when I have the money. No. No. You just find out that what you have done is live layered on emptiness, wealth. That's what it is. Because you don't know yourself. So God is saying that what is most important to me is just as your soul prospered. I will not bless you to the detriment of your soul. That is what he says. He says here, I pray that you prosper in all things and in health, just as, meaning equals to. As your soul prospered, as you prosper in your soul, so I will be committed to give you more of this wealth, more of these earthly blessings, and in good health. So the five dimensions of prosperity that we're going to be looking at. The first is spiritual prosperity. And what does spiritual prosperity do? What does it do? Spiritual prosperity hits the nail on the head. Because everything that was formed was formed first in the spirit. Spiritual prosperity, what does it feel like? What spiritual prosperity feels like is that one, you understand that someone died for you so you do not have to carry life's cross alone. That is what spiritual prosperity looks like. And a great deal, a great number of us, we have that. But we don't rate it. Let me use normal day lingua franca. We don't emphasize the importance of the fact that someone died for me. And because of him, I have a shot at tomorrow. And not just any how tomorrow, a life that is bright. That is the first type of spiritual prosperity that you must start to understand. That there is someone that is looking after your good, ensuring that your foot do not slip, ensuring that while you sleep, he remains on guard, keeping enemies at bay. 
there is the comfort to know that I cannot die before my time. Wealth cannot guarantee you that. So first is spiritual prosperity. That I am loved by an eternal father. That I am the apple of not a man's eye, but the one that created the entire world. He dots over me. He watches over his word to make sure it's performed in my life. It makes, he makes the constellation, he makes things work together. Sun, moon, big people, small people, bad people, good people. He makes sure they all work together for my good. If you understand this, the nature of the father that you have, Fear will be the first thing that starts to give way. Because fear says that there is no hope tomorrow. But your father says, I have gone into your tomorrow. And I saw it. And I said, it is good. So the first thing that you need to understand is that before you chase wealth or as you chase wealth, Chase spiritual prosperity. And that is why my friends, my brothers, my sisters, my elders, you can't play church. You can't have a form of godliness. That is why you need to plunge yourself totally into this. Let me start step a bit. As I was looking for, you know, education... And I tried my hands on Unilag and Lasso and it failed. And you, Covenant University was a lofty dream. In fact, I, think, I didn't even know about them. And when I even found out about them, you know the stories now, Glorified University. You know, the, you know the narrative. So it was nothing appealing, to be honest. Because I wanted to be buck wild and free. Yeah. I, wanted, I, I was going to university with painting color. I needed to paint places red. I, I, I went with paint. But they didn't give me access. They said, no, we don't need your paint. Walo ba, Jesse, walo. So, I started to see that for me to get an education, I needed to embrace Covenant University. But Covenant University had laws. They had tenets. They promised me something that told me they, if you sign up to this program, four years is four years. They told me if you sign up to this program, I can assure you, you wouldn't have to bribe a lecturer to get your degree. If you read it and you pass it, you will get it. But they said for us to make this happen, sir, you will submit your phone. Ah. You cannot wear jeans. Hey! If you have to get into a relationship, you must tell a superior authority. E. There is a time to sleep. There is a time to wake. Ah. The official uniform to the off, to the school, a bit to what's it called, to class, is corporate. You tuck in your shirt. You wear suit and tie. E. And guess what? You are not allowed to bring your daddy's car. E. Even if you don't have. You can't aspire to prosper, to inspire, to get it. E. Not even keke na pep. No, sir. We walk. Every man is equal. And they brought those tenets to me. And I needed to make a choice. Do I want to fight the system for four years? Looking for every loophole of the system to do my natural thing? Or do I want to align and get these things that they have promised? The same way God is asking you. Are you busy looking for the narrative where did they write it in the bible that you should not masturbate please can you literally tell me where did they say it? you see if you look at the old testament you'll find out that adam and abraham he had multiple wives why is it that you are not telling me that I should be celebrated are you bothered about those thin lines or do you just want to align and be a blessing because the problem with us is when we say we want to enjoy spiritual prosperity we come with our terms Say, God, I know you are here, but you can permit me on these things. 
I know you can do it. But don't talk about my quest, a questionable mouth. I know you are here. But when I go to party, I can open a lead too. I know you are here. Bless me anyhow. No, he doesn't bless anyhow. He's a God of order. If he blesses anyhow, you would have assigned animal to man. He doesn't bless anyhow. He gives those that are yoked. He gives, there is order in this kingdom. How are you? Those are my fans right there. So, with spiritual prosperity, there are tenets to uphold. If he needs to be Lord of all, you need to give him all. If he needs to protect everything you hold there, you need to surrender it all. <laughs> so, spiritual prosperity. The next one is mental prosperity. Mental prosperity says to be mentally developed, birthing superior belief system. Guys, mental prosperity means to be mentally developed so that you can birth superior belief system. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You can attain financial prosperity but be mentally bankrupt. Yes, yes. You can have money and not know what to do with it because mental capacity is not formed in you. And I remember one of the things that we learned for those, some of us that are privileged to have gone to Covenant University. We, we had seven pillars and one of them is possibility mentality. And oh boy, every single week at least, they were touching on each of those pillars. We learned it for four years. Spirituality. Guys, you have to help me. Aka is like, no, disgrace me, ma. I knew M is possibility mentality. C is capacity building. R is responsibility. D is mm -mm. discipline or diligence. Is one of the two. Diligent. Aka <laughs> came through. And for four years, they were building and breaking this thing in us. They needed to, they needed to break the fallow ground of our ignorance and infuse it in us. Because all of us came in with all sorts of mental concepts. And they needed to start to tell us. That yes, the man that is diligent in his business. It is not your father's connection. So when you hear Papa say, I can chase out anybody here. Or Pastor just cousin was here. I told him we will rusticate you. He was trying to tell us something. That don't leave the narrative of the world that you are going into. Where Uncle Daddy can get you the job. Because they can get you but they cannot keep you there. You see, one of the biggest challenges that some people are having with jobs that RNG Connection has gotten for them, they can never experience good because they are staying on a level that they do not know anything about. So they are just there. Until that uncle leaves, they'll get their job. The moment that uncle leaves, one person wakes up and says, this one is not fitting. Hey, Yokuro. So they started to teach us on mental capacity. They started to teach us that life does not consist of everything that a man has. They started to teach us those kind of things. So when we talk about mental prosperity is how can you bet supernatural ideas, superior thinking. How can you come to the table and speak and somebody looks back and you're like, oh, where are you from? Guys, that is prosperity. Because eventually as you think it, you become it. So don't pray for money alone. Pray for mental prosperity. You know, I wrote here, when belief system is faulty, almost nothing can bless you. 
Can you imagine if you carry the narrative of women are just furnitures in the house? There's nothing that woman can do that will bless you. She's a lot more. But mentally, you have closed your head to that possibility. So when she tells you, I can add income to the home, woman, shut up. When she tells you, do you not think that we can adopt this? Mary? This was the way mommy told us that we do it and it worked. Shut up. No, this is the way we do it in our place. Nothing can bless you. Because when there is a ceiling in mental capacity, nothing can rise above it. Everything around you is a report card showing you the extent of your mindset. Everything around you shows you how you think. When you want to relax, what do you do? You go to the club. It shows you the mindset that you carry. When you want to relax, what do you do? We hang out with the big boys. It shows you the mindset. When you want to attain, do you, what do you do? You call this, you call that, you study. It shows you. In fact, somebody says that if I spend 10 minutes with you in your leisure time, I know the way you think. You see people talk. And you can already tell the one that he likes dirty talk. Because everything, you know those people now? Everything will always narrow there. Go and pick it. Go and pick it. <laughs> are you going downstairs? You are going downstairs. <laughs> Mental capacity. Everything with them is sex and ludity everything they can't grow past that they can't any small money where you get like this can I beg you any little money where you get no use for enjoyment oh. because the bible says there is he that scattereth and get it. And there is he that withhold it beyond capacity and lead it to poverty. If everything you do is yeah, 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 yeah. My mother will say, if you use all your five fingers to eat, after a while, when there's nothing to eat, you eat your nails. You know when you eat your nails, it's a bad thing. It's a bad thing. So, so don't use all your five fingers to eat. So what are we saying? Building mental capacity. Some of you that are asking that you want to reach husband, why? To increase your level of laziness so that you can join Arab women and say, my husband, he walk, me, I drive Bentley. There is a lot that your life can become. And Mr. Going to the gym, are you going to the gym to oppress all the sisters? Is that the purpose or do you just want to keep fit? Let us ask ourselves, because see, let me tell you something. When you... It is not in poverty that you know who you are. It's in plenty. So when you make that money, but mentally, you are still down there. It, in my mind, I feel like say, oh my show. You, you will not be able to use it in a way that it can multiply. You will not be able to use it in a way that it will bless lives. You will not be able to use it in a way that it will bless even you. I look at it, somebody has an extensive amount of money, then he gives himself solely to the ministry of alcohol. Whose liver? The alcohol company? It's your liver. So please be careful. Team, too much enjoyment. My parents will say, it is not work that killed a man. It's play. So please, you see how the world is teaching us narrative. Any little money where I get now. My future, I don't get future. My future go wait. He said, My future, no, they go anywhere. See how she said it like, You know, they go, they don't burn them. Ha! Your future is not going anywhere. Your future is like signboard, it's like this. Let's be careful what we say. It's funny, but let's be careful. Bodily prosperity. Health and well-being. 
if you deteriorate on your body or with your body, you may make heaven, but you may not live a life that fulfilled purpose. You see, I like the Bible. The Bible is balanced. First Timothy 4, it says, I think verse 10, it says, bodily exercise profited little. He used little in comparison to spiritual exercise. He did not say spiritual exercise is equal to physical exercise. So, team pastors, as soon, sleep. Because sleep is part of bodily exercise. If you use a smartwatch, you find three things there. Sleep time, eat time, and workout time. So, how do you take care of this body? The people of old gave themselves solely to these things, but they did not also apply wisdom. But you see, now we know. Grace could cover for them then because they did not know. Now you know that it is from when you are little that you, get, you start to get excited eating fruits. It is not when you get there. One of the shocking things that the Lord showed me, he said, oh, look at Genesis 1. I gave them plants for food. Do you guys know that it was until after Noah's time that he gave them animals for food? In the first season, animals were not supposed to be for food. Vegetables. I'm not saying God is a vegan because some of you now are going to take that now and say, all oh, you meat eating people, hell no. <laughs> Bodily prosperity is ensuring that the tool that God has given to you on earth is being serviced optimally. Eating the right type of food, not and eating it at the right time. I see the people that your coaches are starting to deal with you. We are all in the WhatsApp group, don't worry. And you that you are team slim, anything where I chop, you know the show. Hey, it's telling on your heart. Yes. Oh, yes. There are some people, and if you are here, you don't even raise your hand. Just accept that you are talking to you. Every time you climb the stairs and you first have to hold the railing, bless you, bless you. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> there is a call to your attention. And you see, the thing about God is when God needs you to fix something, when God needs you to fix something, he makes grace to do available and not a miracle. When God wants you to fix bad character, that is not when he gives you a man that does not know anything about character, no. He gives you grace to handle bad character. So some of you are asking for a miracle where God is saying, no, what you need is a classroom, not a miracle. Go and learn the ways. Go and train your body. Go and subject it and take, stop this thing. I have a friend here. God told him about three years or two years ago, stop taking soda. And he obeyed. Some of us, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, the world and <laughs> men are raising them now. The fourth is financial prosperity. Now, this is the most talked about. But can you see the weight of the other ones that we have been talking about? Let me shock you. Financial prosperity cannot help spiritual prosperity. Financial prosperity cannot help mental prosperity. Financial prosperity cannot help bodily prosperity. Now, what am I saying? If you don't take care of those things, that you have money does not fill the gap. Now, financial prosperity can aid, can enable you strengthen your pursuit for spiritual prosperity. It's money that we used to attend Wolf B. It's money that we used to attend some of these things. 
when you go for seminars, when you go for trainings, when you sit under powerful men of God, you need some form of financial to at least transport yourself there. It's a level of financial prosperity that you need to tell your organization that I will not be around for the first week of January. If you're a non-entity, you can't make those kind of declarations. It's the truth. So can you see that financial prosperity can help your pursuit? It does not fill the void. It helps your pursuit. Mental prosperity, the ability to be able to think globally. Some of us are here. You can't think beyond Nigeria. Or you, everything around you is conditioned around the fact of the inconsistency of Nepal. I know it's not, it's not an insult. It's just that your mind has not been exposed to a life beyond Nepal. A life beyond, ah, if I can just get that bag, last song, ah, oh my God. Then you see some people that they have the bag, but they don't have the peace you have. Or they have that life, but they still want more. But is financial prosperity now bad? No. No. Part of what God wants you to be is financially prosperous. The Bible was talking about Abraham. God gave him a promise. But along the way, the Bible started to record how Abraham started to have many cattle and many cows and many things and that. He had from a man that went from a father, his father's land to an unknown land, the Bible said they got to a point that the land they had, him and Lot, their wealth was clashing. And they needed to separate. They needed to expand. The Bible speaks even of Jesus that there were some women that were funding his ministry. Eight of them. Luke 8, sorry. The Bible speaks of a woman that brought the choicest of oil and she poured it at his feet. And the Bible recorded that one of the Mr. Financial Steward, Mr. Judas Iscariot, he says that the value of this oil is equivalent to one year's wage. And they just poured it on your feet like that. But I'm sure you know that that was actually the oil to signify death, to symbolize death. Financial prosperity enables that you carry out the work of God without begging. The Bible speaks in Proverbs, it says, The rich would always rule over the poor, just as the beggar will be perpetually subject to the lender. So what wealth does for you is to carry out your assignment without having to bootleg or to kiss us, or to wait for people. Another thing that we've also said, or we have not said about prosperity is, you need to be financially prosperous so that you can be comfortable. Yes. Oh yes. What God does not encourage is us being ostentatious. Now, ostentatious is you neglect the needs or you, you, you neglect what is important and you are chasing after what is flinting. You know, ostentatious people are the kind of people that they have no regard for money. They spend it anyhow. There is no caution, no decorum. You know, you are just very wasteful. God doesn't want that. But he wants you to be comfortable. It's not the will of God for you to trek from your house to come to church. No. And he wants you to have a car. And after a while, you can ask him that, God, it would be a good idea for my car to have AC. God, you know what? The money I spend on servicing and not servicing because this car is a fairly used, it's getting too much. Lord, maybe I can get brand new. God does not frown at that. But the question I always ask is, what is your motive? You see, the biggest problem that we're having now with our youths is they want money and they need they, they, they have the zeal to work for money which is good but their motive is wrong 
The motive is very wrong. And that speaks to mental prosperity. The news is highlighting a lot of ritual killings. And that seeks to say financial prosperity has taken such a early or an elevated point in people's life that it has robbed them of morality. The Bible said concerning Abel that Abel, where is your brother? And Abel answered, Am I my brother's keeper? Cain, sorry, Cain, yeah. Am I my brother's keeper? So we have gotten to places where people are like, I don't care about you. If I need to run you over, I will run you over. I just need to be my, I just need to get what I want. And that morality is dying. And God saw that and he said, no, Cain, what have you done? And there was a curse for that. Now, what does financial prosperity do for us? There are four stages in life when it comes to financial prosperity. The first is survival. The next is comfort. The third is luxury. The fourth is extravagance. Two are not for believers. Survival and extravagance. The Bible recorded in the book of Acts that each one shared of what he had and there was none amongst them that was lacking anything. A mindset of extravagance would always want to attain and would never want to dispense. A mindset of survival would never have enough to share abroad. So do you understand that the entry level and the highest level are the ones that God does not like? God doesn't want you to hustle. He doesn't want you to be surviving. He doesn't want you to have to take 010 as a lifestyle and you're saying, no, I'm just watching my weight. No. He wants you to be able to have 111, then you choose to eat one meal out of three. Do you understand the nature of the Father? But there's also an extremity to it that a lot of us want to have to an abundant measure for nothing. For nothing. No goals, no nothing. Please, let me tell you, if you're here and you're like, no, Pastor Linda, you don't understand. If the Lord gives me one million dollars today, it's finished in my head. I like that. But I would, I would understand and I would know it's true by how you use 1,000 Naira. It is just the law of multiplier effect. Let me tell you, there is an adage in Yoruba, money can never be enough. There is nothing like enough money. There is nothing like it. It's a fallacy. There is, see, you will get to a stage in life that private jet is not enough. You want to own the sky. Some guys are here now telling you that they are negotiating how to live in Mars. It is never enough. But how do you use the one that you have? Shows you how you will use that great one that you are expecting. Survival and extravagance. I want to beg you. Don't pursue those things. The religion that tells you that, ah, just be me, ko. Don't wear this. Don't wear this. That one that accentuates poverty as meekness is not of Christ. You know that that accentuates it. It makes you feel like you have not entered a depth with God till you are poor. It's not of God. I like what my wife said. She said the Bible says, blessed are those that are poor in where? Spirit. For they shall obtain the kingdom of God. So God wants us to live lives that are comfortable. So we can provide, we can provide financially to kingdom advancement. Now guys, every time we hear kingdom advancement, it takes the nature of you must give to the church. Now you know why that is so? Because the church is the one place where a lot of kingdom advancement projects occur. 
Every church has a docker's department, a less privilege, a da 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 different units. So what it means is, if you come to the church, you definitely will find needs that are attached into making people's life better. I'm sure you know that when we say kingdom advancement, it's actually the lives of people. It's not the life of God that you are trying to advance. It's the life of people through God. So when somebody that was not able to go to university goes to the university and that person becomes a scientist, you just brought about the kingdom of God. That's kingdom advancement. When someone that was hooked on drugs, you were able to rehabilitate the person. Now the person is conscious of himself. is making healthy decisions to better the populace. It is kingdom advancement. So, so what I'm trying to tell you is Aside from your charitable offer, because what people have told you is, ah, don't give the church, they're going to use it. Is that's what your pastor used to shine his new tire? No. You need to understand that kingdom advancement takes the nature of these things. So, what you need to be asking is, ask the church, what are the kingdom projects that you are doing so that we can sponsor? And by God's grace, this year we'll be doing a lot. There's something in our CSR called translate. The Lord is saying to us, how do you translate speaking in tongues to the man that is hungry? Reke daba. The Bible says, do not say to your brother when he's hungry that the Lord heals you and he fills you up. No, provide food for him. That's translating. Some people will know you first in your generous, generous nature than they know you in your spiritual element. Do you know that? Do you understand that? Some people's first contact with you is because you are a kind person, not because you can cast out demons. They will find out about demons later, but kindness is what draws them to you. So that is kingdom advancement, guys. And kingdom advancement are also things that you too can also do. My wife, at every certain time in year, she'll come home day, the kids in this street, let's give children's day gifts. We are not running for local government chairman. No. No. Because you see, we tie it to those things. Something that makes you receive a reward. Because that's what they told you mentally. When a guy is nice to a girl, the next thing is he likes her. He doesn't have to. In fact, nicety must be so generous or must be so popular that when somebody does it, it doesn't look like as if he's trying to chase you. You know why? So that he has to do more than being nice to actually show his love for you. Some of you, you have been so starving of being of, of nice people that just one guy is saying, take like a Sarah. Oh my God. Oh my God. God is saying, upgrade your mindset. Nice city is, a, is something that you can get. So some guys are flaunting money around you, but you are not asking the real questions because it's nice. That anger is just sometimes, Sha. It's even me that causes it. Can we focus on the real issue? Every time you guys have a fight, he's quick to say, you know, I just sent you something. No, God, keep your something. Can we talk? And for the guys, that every small argument, she's already telling you, ah, ah, look at me now. So you're telling me you want to miss all this. Oh, God, calm down. Auntie, let's talk. Who is that guy that you are saying hi to? No. So can you understand what I'm saying, guys? That in this kingdom, we need to be able to attach kingdom projects. To things that is the only way that God can be glorified with our wealth yes when your wealth has the ability to replicate in the life of a person you have extended the nature of God yes. to that person I learned something from Apostle Joshua Selman I wrote it down somewhere and I'm going to read it He said, so I'm trying to really look. I know it. Yeah. He said, owners, when you say I own wealth, owners are not the people God is looking for. God is looking for stewards. What is a steward? A steward is someone that has resources in his hands, but his job is to dispense it and to protect it and to administer it. God is not asking you to own wealth. He's asking you to be a dispenser of wealth. If it ends only at your table, it may not fulfill the will of God. It needs to extend. 
God doesn't call us just to be blessed. He calls us to be a... Thank you very much. I'm going to rush through the last two and we'll close. Okay, no, the last one. Relational prosperity. Relational prosperity says the opportunity to express love with useful people around you. Money is only useful because there are people at the other end to receive it. Don't chase money over relationship. Let me tell you something, guys. Money is flinting. There's, there is a certain type of proximity and closeness that I share with some people. Let me not use my wife because you guys will say she be you are married by law. There is a certain type of relationship I share with certain people that even if you have all the money in the world, you cannot access that relationship. Yes. If you have all the money in the world. So what am I saying? In your pursuit of having money, stop burning unnecessary bridges. Some of you, you go always with a touch. Boom. I understand those ones that bring negative vibes and negative energy. But like we said last week, give people opportunities to mess up. Don't be so quick to rule people out. out. Do you know that you too, you have flaws that people they, 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 they permit or they accommodate and just like you are praying for somebody to be nicer, somebody is praying for you to be better. So don't stand on your high horse and feel like they are all trash. No. Be relational. Jesus was going to die for the world, but he needed 12 disciples. He was a relational guy. You know what will make 12 men say, sir, we've left everything to follow you. It was not just about the sign and wonders, guys. They could see that this guy had genuine love. The Bible will say, and Jesus moved with compassion. In fact, his compassion was so great that even the disciples were like, ah, what, what type of man is this? They are insulting you and you are saying, the disciples said, can, can we call lions? Can we call bears to eat them up? And Jesus was like, yeah. That's not my own kind of kingdom. Oh. I'm not Elijah. No. I, I bless those that persecute me. I love those that hate me. That's what I do. I'm a relational person. It takes strong relationship to be on the dying cross and you're still trying to save a soul. He was still telling the guy, and you will be with me in paradise. If it's some of you, that they are even... You're, 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 You, I'm dying beside a thief. See the people I'm, I'm dying for. <laughs> Crucifying. You know the way human beings can get. You're already trying to hold yourself. Then somebody is saying, Be relational. See, let me tell you guys something. Yes, and that's why we pray for grace. My wife always says this thing. There's a difference between someone that has a bad day and someone that has a bad heart. You can excuse when people have bad days because you have already seen the consistency of their good nature that makes you excuse that occurrence. But you see when that occurrence becomes too much, it starts to tell us that maybe there is a part of you that we have not seen before. So what am I trying to say, guys? Please be relational so that people don't now think of you in the light that you are not. Every time you get into turmoil and you do not know how to manage your words or manage your emotions and you start to leak, after a while, people start to avoid you. Think about it. If at every time you are under pressure, you are lashing out and you expect everybody to understand, you expect everybody to get it. After a while, when people see that you are lashing out, because you have told them that I have not been able to master my emotions, so they will give you space. But there is a way in which people see you and they see that you are trying to master it and they will help you. I've seen people when they are, people come to their rescue, like, Olumde, you know what, calm down. Here's what we're going to do. Okay, you just do this. And they come to your aid because they know that you're a relational person. Guess what? Half of the time you do it to them too. So please, relational prosperity is also linked to generosity of heart that we talked about last Sunday. It, it, it can't just be for myself, by myself. No. Jesus 
so that after all he had done, the Bible says Peter, he went back into the sea. He caught nothing. Do you know what that was of, for Jesus? This guy has gone back to the place I met him. Meaning that he's willing to forgo all the memories that we had. Jesus had to come back. And he had to show him. That's, hey. So the first thing Jesus did was to remind him of that experience. The Bible says, somebody told him, cast your net to the other side. Because the Bible said, at that time they did not know that he was Jesus. You know, guys, I just want to throw this out there. How was it possible that they did not know he was Jesus? Was it that he changed appearance? I don't even know. I'm not even trying to create a theory here. I'm just reading the Bible to understand. And the Bible said that the moment they saw or they heard or they knew that it was Jesus, they dived, Peter dived into the water to come and see Jesus. And Jesus said, guys, come and eat. Would that be the first thing you would do for a very stubborn child? You know the year word. Come here. Upon all the die, where I die, you see they go back to fishing. I literally told you you are a fisher of man. Look at all of them I followed you. The Bible said, Jesus said, Come, you guys. I don't cook down. Relational. Then Jesus was asking him questions like, If you love me, feed my sheep. Telling him that if you want to do what I do, you too will be what? Relational. Do you know that Peter needed that statement so that he could accommodate Paul? Because the one that was the one crucifying them now became the one that God wanted to use. He became the sheep. And what was the assignment God gave Peter? If you love me, feed my sheep. So as questionable as that sheep was, because I love Jesus, you get wild and small, but I'm going to love you. The same way some of you need to start to act to your neighbors. That's your neighbor that always likes to hang clothes in the place that they should not hang clothes. Or the one that always uses her car to block you. When she wants to go out, she shouts at you to carry your car. But when, she, when you want to go out, she's never available. Show love. Be relational. Know their birthdays. Call them by names that make them happy. Be intentional. Guys, the five levels of prosperity are what Jesus was talking about in this scripture. That I pray that you prosper in all these things. So we are going to rise up and pray this morning. I'm going to us find places in this prosperity journey that we can be better. I want to be spiritually prosperous. Meaning I want to chase after God like I have no other option. I don't want to chase him like as if it's convenient. I want to chase him like as if it is commanded. I want to love on Jesus. I, I don't want my heart to be second. I don't want him to second guess the posture of my heart. With Christ, it is not for better, for stay, for worse, for go. I want to be here. Therefore, some of you, you need to pray, Lord, deliver me from this mindset. Every mental limitation that does not enable me be my best. Lord, help me. We need to pray this prayer. So pick whatever area that you want God to help you with. And I want you to talk to God with him right now. You see, the thing about when a man knows his fault is grace comes available. You struggle because you have not owned up to your faults. But when you know your faults or you know your limitations, grace becomes available. Because the Bible says a broken and a contract heart the Lord does not despise. So today, I am seeing men and women that will take a leap into a new level of prosperity. Because now they know the truth. And God is about to set them free. Pray, 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 pray. Talk to him, talk to him. He searches much deeper within. He knows your heart. When my heart to you, everything.